Before video games, the pinball machine reigned supreme. It's lost ground, but it's still a winning concept. You pull a plunger to get the ball rolling, but the action is real and not on a screen. You hit flippers and navigate bumpers to the clamor of clanging bells and flashing lights. No wonder it's not yet game over for pinball. The game of pinball is unprogrammed and unpredictable. To make a pinball machine, they string reams of wire for the electronics. There's more than three quarters of a kilometer of it in one pinball machine. They use different types of color-coded wire, winding it around pins and attaching it to connectors on the circuit board. There's a detailed set of instructions and an engineering drawing to keep things from getting in a tangle. They remove the wires in loosely tied bunches. This allows them to move freely as they dip the tips into a hot metal soup to solder them together. Not all wires are soldered. Others get attachments called lugs. They crimp them onto the ends of the wires with a hydraulic machine. These lugs will be used to connect wires to attachments on the playfield. They hook up the cable to a testing board and check every circuit. They place the play field, adorned with colorful art, onto the bed of nails with foam strips. The nail bed rises and presses against a header. The nails prick the back of the board, but the foam strips stop them from going through. These nail holes will serve as markers for installing pinball targets and tactical features on the playfield. Next, they drill a few holes. Then cover the playfield with a metal template to drill more holes. These will be used to mount some of that pinball gadgetry onto the playfield. They hammer in anchors to attach the metal railings that keep the silver balls from rolling off the playfield. There's a lamppost, followed by some plastic bumpers. They install 115 flashing lights. Now it's time to permanently attach all that wiring. They solder some directly onto the board and fuse others to switches. They bolt a speaker into the cabinet for some major sound effects. This spring-powered plunger goes in next. Without it, you couldn't take your opening shot. They attach a toy villain and add a ramp in the shape of a sword, along with a few other toy characters. It's time for the inaugural run. They roll the pinball into every target and mechanism to test the switches. There can be 70 switches in a game. They press all the buttons as a computerized system diagnoses any malfunctions. They don't miss a shot as they put the pinball and the gadgetry through their paces. If everything works, they slide the playfield into the cabinet. It gets a shatterproof window because it could take some abuse from enthusiastic gamers. They lock it down with a metal bar. Finally, they mount the header and this pinball machine is wired and ready for action.